guys, gals, my music pals. It's Miss Thrift Wench. This is day one of me getting to be home and work from home in the midst of our unexpected break. It's day two of you guys getting to be home. I hope everybody's working hard on their e-learning. I hope that you're staying safe and healthy, and I hope you're doing everything that the adults in charge of you are asking you to do. Follow your directions, and please be kind. We miss you guys so much, and I've seen a lot of teachers there doing read-alouds, and I wanted to get in on that, but I have this really cool book. It's called The Lives of the Musicians, and it is about different composers. So in the background, let's see if you can hear it. Can I turn it up? This piece is called Spring, and it's by Antonio Vivaldi. And I thought it was a really cool way to get started, because spring actually starts this week. Spring will start on Thursday. So I thought I could read to you a little bit about Mr. Antonio Vivaldi. Before we start, I don't own this book. Like, I bought it, but I didn't write it. So, copyright law. This is for educational purposes only. My kiddos know how much I cover myself with copyright law, so turn this down a little bit now. All right. So this is Antonio Vivaldi, also known as the Red Priest. He was born in Venice, Italy in 1678, and he passed away in Vienna, Austria in 1741. The most original and influential Italian composer of his generation, most famous for his 400 concertos, especially the Four Seasons. Sunny, warm Venice was a place where you couldn't get away from music. Gondoliers serenaded up and down the canals, fruit vendors whistled, shoemakers and shoppers sang from morning to night. Festivals, theaters, parties, and religious services required a constant supply of new music. Antonio Vivaldi's father had big plans for him. He taught him the violin, got him a job as a violinist, and sent Vivaldi into the priesthood when the boy was 15 years old. Father and son played duets at church. By the time Antonio was 25 and took a job teaching violin at the Piecia Orphanage for Girls, he was earning four times as much as his father. Vivaldi was to spend most of his life at the Piecia. Sorry if I'm saying that wrong. I don't speak Italian very well. Next to the big iron gate of the orphanage was a little nook in the wall where every morning the porter checked for new arrivals. Orphaned or abandoned babies were given a home and taught music. The girls gave concerts that were the highlight of musical life in Venice. They gave, they sang like angels and played their instruments with great skill. It was said that the Piecia had the best disciplined orchestra in Italy at that time. Yet the girls were seldom seen. At concerts, they were hidden from the audience by an iron gate, possibly because some were deformed. It means something didn't look normal. Doesn't mean bad, but back then, you know. Since they performed in a church, no applause were allowed, and people expressed enthusiasm by coughing. We would not want to do that right now. Shuffling their feet and blowing their noses loudly. Vivaldi had to make sure everything ran smoothly. During intermissions, he would keep people entertained by playing his violin. He had thick, curly red hair, and sometimes he wore red robes. More people knew him by his nickname, the Red Priest, than by his real name, but he did not seem especially priestly. He didn't say mass. He said that he had weak conditions, possibly asthma, that prevented him from getting through a long religious service. But others said that he was forbidden to say mass because he was always disappearing from the altar to jot down musical ideas. Vivaldi may have been sickly, but he worked hard. He taught violin, conducted the orchestra, performed at concerts, and bought musical instruments for the school. Sounds like teachers who buy their supplies. <laughs> Outside the orphanage, he toured in support of his own playing and composing. Vivaldi wrote music for all occasions. He was one of the most prolific composers in the history of music. Vivaldi must have been full of energy and probably didn't have time to be temperamental. He didn't agonize over his work. He was differential to those in authority, and he never seemed to get into trouble. Sometimes he was playful, putting little jokes in his music. He was terribly sensitive to criticism and was notoriously vain. He liked to boast about his fame, his rich patrons, and his ability to write music so quickly. 
Some people think he sometimes lied, saying he had written 94 operas, for example, when only 49 have ever been found. Vivaldi was obsessed with money. He always asked the highest possible price for his music, but he also spent his money, and he died at 63 from a mysterious inflammation. He died poor, his music out of fashion. Not until the music of Bach that was discovered over a hundred years later, and it was seen how much Bach respected the Red Priest did interest in Vivaldi's music revive. And then we have musical notes. The Four Seasons, a set of four violin concertos, is one of the best known works in Italian musical history. Part of the music, parts of the music, excuse me, were meant to sound like turtle doves and goldfinches, flashes of lightning, a barking dog, piercing winds, and chattering teeth. While for many people today, this is Vivaldi's most beautiful work, it was also voted most boring composition by New York radio listeners in 1984. To each their own. <laughs> If Vivaldi was really in a hurry, he'd borrow tunes from his earlier music and from other composers. But then, so did other musicians of the time. One of Vivaldi's greatest admirers, Bach, borrowed some of Vivaldi's work and used it in his own compositions. Nowadays, that's called plagiarizing. And we're not supposed to do that. Or you have to give people credit. In 1989, two of the top ten compact discs... That would be a CD. I don't even know if you guys know what a CD is. Some of you do, because I use them in class. But anyway, in 1989, two of the top ten compact discs selling in England were Vivaldi's music. So I hope you enjoyed this little bit of Vivaldi's music, and I hope you enjoyed hearing about him, and I hope you enjoyed seeing the little bit of my living room. Yes, I still have Christmas decorations up. You guys know I like Christmas. Don't judge me. Anyway... We miss you. All of your teachers miss you. We hope you're staying safe. We hope you're staying healthy. And hopefully we will be all back together in April after we have two weeks of e-learning and spring break. So until tomorrow, high fives, fist bumps, air hugs, and I will see you again later, my guys, gals, and musical pals. Bye.